Hi, my name is Lori Greenlee. Welcome to Cover Your Asset Condos. For the past 15 years, I've been searching for resources to help guide condo buying and owning Americans. Resources and fiduciaries, like what you will find protecting citizens in parts of Canada and Malaysia. But still nothing, until last year when the governor of Florida implemented new legislation only because of another horrible tragedy. So I left my career of 25 years in banking and private wealth management to start this mission to educate and warn American condo owners and buyers. It's already been two years since the collapse of the South Champlain Towers in Miami, Florida. It was June 24, 2021, when 98 lives were taken at 1.22 in the morning. How could this happen in a country like America, where everything is so heavily regulated? The building was just one of three in a development that was completed in 1981. It was only 40 years old. It was your typical condo building, 12 stories high, 136 units from one to four bedrooms, and it had all of the great amenities that draw people to condo life. The pool deck was ultimately what started the collapse at about 1.14 that morning. But the actual damage that caused this collapse had been known about for quite some time. A structural inspection had uncovered some very confusing and expensive news to the decision makers, the owners of the building, the homeowners association, the condo owners themselves. The first thing to note is that these condo owners should be commended for having the structural inspection and reserve study completed because it is believed that fewer than 30% of all condo buildings, that is homeowners associations across America have had this work done or have had these reports reviewed and updated in recent years. I'm going to stop here because the most important thing to ask and answer here at this point is who are the decision makers for these large commercial buildings? because that is indeed what a condo building is, a commercial building. Let's go back to the beginning. When a developer is nearing the end of a project, he or she will hand the funded reserve and operating accounts over to the homeowner association, the new condo owners of the building or buildings he or she has developed. These funds are collected at the time you purchase a new build condo. At that point, the developer no longer has ownership in the building. They will be responsible for warranties and liabilities based on their contract with you, as well as any city, county, and state laws, rules, and regulations for whatever period of time is required of them. But at this point in time, the HOA, that is you, the condo owners, own the building, all of the amenities, and everything outside of the four walls that you as a condo owner would personally own on your deed. So exactly who or what is the HOA that owns the building at this point? The HOA is a business, a nonprofit one, but it is a legally registered business made up of all of the condo owners in the building at any given time, and only the condo owners, nobody else. There is no condo ferry or anybody else that is making decisions for or responsible for this building moving forward. The builder and all contractors are gone. There is no owner per se. You are the owner. When you purchase a condo or any other property that is part of an HOA, you automatically become a member of that HOA. It is not a choice. You cannot opt out. This means you are a business owner as well as a condo owner. You are legally responsible for the activity of the nonprofit HOA and the assets it owns separately from the purchase of your condo itself, which is similar to any other real estate purchase. The primary difference between purchasing a condo and single family home is that the deed will reflect your ownership as the space between the four walls of the condo that you own and the deed of a single family home most often reflects the entire home, such as the roof, windows, foundation, and so forth, as well as the land that it sits on. Usually the HOA of a single family home development will own assets such as a community park and its playground equipment, swimming pool, fitness room, or clubhouse. The same responsibility will be required of each homeowner as it is with the condo owners in regards to the HOA. However, a condo HOA not only owns all of the above, but it also owns the building, 
the actual structure that houses or holds all of those condos and is responsible for the roof, windows, foundation, the common things we mentioned previously that a single family home usually includes in their deed. The HOA owns and manages the structure above, below, and around your four walls, as well as the grounds outside. The other difference in a condo HOA is that it is also responsible for the elevators, balconies, parking structures, storage units, the HVAC, plumbing, electrical, exterior siding, entries, hallways, doors. I think you get what I'm saying here. Hopefully it's becoming easier to see why the condo HOA should be viewed as a business when it comes to the things a condo owner is responsible for on a daily basis. And hopefully I'm convincing you, whether you are a condo owner now or considering becoming one, to be actively involved in your HOA. Would you purchase a company and then go silent, allowing the next door neighbor you don't know to make all of the decisions for you? to only sit and wait to see what you are faced with down the road financially, or even worse, what if they aren't taking care of the important structural issues of your building and your family's safety is put at risk. So what's the difference between a condo building, apartment building, and commercial building? Most of them are owned in some type of legal entity or company. Rarely do you find an apartment building or a commercial building owned in somebody's personal name. However, unlike a commercial building and apartment building, as we mentioned, condo buildings are owned by HOAs, which are a type of nonprofit usually, but still a legal business entity. The other difference and most important difference is that most state and city governments primarily rely on condo HOAs to self-manage their way through most safety and financial decisions. These same governments have guidelines, inspection processes, and very clear and controlled permit requirements in place for commercial and apartment buildings, leaving condo buildings and uneducated purchasing condo owners out on an island of decision-making of their own. You will find fire safety and exterior inspection requirements, but when it comes to structural and interior inspections, condos are not regulated like apartment buildings and commercial buildings are. So let's go back. What is the HOA? Who's the HOA? It's you, the condo owner. It's me. It's the neighbor you ride the elevator with. It's the investor who rents their condo and lives across the country or the world. To be clear, in all cases, the HOA is made up of average people like you and me. We are making decisions on the entire building from the roof, hallways, siding, windows, elevator, HVAC, plumbing, electrical, structural integrity, amenities, many of which are within the building itself, doors, balconies, parking structures, interior and exterior, the lobby area, and so forth. As you can see, the condo HOA business is very demanding and there's a lot to be responsible for. So I was asked, are you saying there are no regulatory requirements, guidelines, nothing we need to report to anybody as a condo HOA, nobody to guide us? And the answer is yes, that's exactly what I'm saying. To top it off, and something else we'll talk about in future classes, video blogs, as part of the HOA board, there is a legal and fiduciary responsibility and liability that is placed on each board member who is simply trying to help their community do the right thing by volunteering their time without any guidance, not realizing the risk they have placed on themselves. If you live in a condo today, how do you know that the building you are in is safe? There are a few things you can do. First of all, educate your HOA, your business partners, your neighbors, so that they are supportive and become more involved. It is important that they understand what is behind some of the big decisions and issues that they're going to be making and facing in the near future. Have a reserve study performed and do a structural inspection. Pay attention to the recommendations of these studies and prioritize a plan as an HOA. Come up with a plan to fund these reserves in full according to those recommendations and reach out to us so we can help educate you and your board. So if you are considering purchasing a condo, how do you ensure that building you are purchasing is safe? There is a missing fiduciary in the condo purchase process. 
Your real estate agent or broker is not permitted to review the HOA documents and offer advice. Remember, the HOA is a business. It is a separate part of the real estate transaction. It takes special knowledge and training to understand the bylaws, financials, reserve studies, CCNRs, and so forth. This is why your agent or broker cannot help. You have several options to protect yourself. You are purchasing a business. Do your due diligence on that business as you would for any other business you would be purchasing. Read and understand all legal documents, the entity setup documents, the CCNRs, including at least six months of minutes at minimum looking for a common theme of discussion that might tell you there is a potential assessment on the horizon. Find out how involved and educated the HOA is that you are considering. I have a checklist that I can send you if you are interested of other questions you should be asking. So please reach out, I'm happy to help. Take a look at this checklist. This is an example of ways I've compared HOAs and the due diligence I've done to help educate myself, clients, and colleagues. It looks like a lot of work, and it is, but it is worth it when you consider the possibility of a surprise $140,000 or more special assessment. These are assessments that have taken place over the last year. These buildings were meant to have major repairs or replacements at 30 to 40 years, and that is exactly where we are at with the majority of our condos across America. So knowledge is going to be power, but it will take extra effort to get that knowledge until we have the legislation in place protecting America. I originally created 24 hours of condo-specific training for a real estate team I started in Denver, Colorado. We only focused on condos, but I quickly realized that with aging buildings and underfunded reserves, I needed to get this message out to the general public as quickly as possible. Stay tuned for upcoming courses, videos, and blogs. Florida, I'm going to explain exactly what is going on with the new legislation SB4D and help each of you understand your responsibility, whether that is to train you and your board or to help you understand more as a buyer. But I'm also here to help you understand what you can do if you are facing some difficult situations because of some surprise large assessments. Thank you and have a great day. Mm -hmm.